Our first match of the round of 16 in the 2022 World Cup. The Netherlands 3, USA 1. What can I say? So, our boys, our boys are going home. They exit the World Cup in the round of 16. It is our third round of 16 exit uh, in the last 20 years. And what is the lesson? What's the takeaway? What is this? What did this result ultimately boil down to? It boiled down to just simply getting outclassed by number one, a tactically superior manager, a world-class manager in my view in Louis van Gaal, and number two, seasoned, well-groomed, experienced players that the Dutch national side has. If there was any match in this World Cup that showed the U.S. team's naivete and inexperience, it was this one. And from about the first 10 minutes of this match, the Netherlands had adequately sussed out exactly what the U.S. team was all about because... Van Hal's approach to this match was quite simple. The Dutch recognized that we were going to have the the majority of possession, and frankly, they allowed us to have most of the possession. You see, because Van Hal did his homework. He knew that this is a U.S. team who, in the group stages, regularly struggled at finishing. This U.S. team is lacking an out-and-out pure striker to bury the chances that it creates. And this was becoming something of a running theme well before the World Cup started, and it is even more it was put on display here. So what Van Hal did was, he somewhat allowed us, he allowed us to create as many half chances as needed so that once the Netherlands won possession of the ball back, they were able to break. And the Dutch left our defenders free to build up and only put pressure on the mid. But if the defense passes out of the back, there was space in front of them. So if they walk the ball forward, they left space in their back with a high line, which is what the U.S. did at times. And how quick the Dutch were in transition periodically left our back line out in really awkward positions on the pitch. And Denzel Dumfries, he just had to pass, not directly, but in the space behind us. And what did the U.S. do to compensate for that? Well, we played into Van Hal's trap here because to try to close those spaces, we started to make the field of play narrow with our backs crowding the box. And when we did that, that led to both Blind and Dumfries being free with ample amount of space. And that was what resulted in the third goal, especially. The first two goals in this match, though, the first two goals by Memphis Depay and Danny Blind were virtually identical. They were mirror image reflections of each other. And Van Hal had some devastating words. He was very blunt in the post-match. He said that they, meaning the USMNT, did not adapt at all during the game. They didn't adapt. We didn't adapt. And after we had conceded the first goal in in the aforementioned fashion that I just said, we didn't do enough to switch things up. We kept just playing into the Netherlands' hands, and they were more than content to just let us do our thing. And... Look, we don't need, from a U.S. perspective, I hope that American and Dutch fans watching this will find this interesting. But from a U.S. perspective, we don't need to be proud that we had the bulk of possession. Maybe in the Tiki Taka era, that was something to be proud of, but it's not anymore. It doesn't win games. I mean, Japan beat Spain the other day with 17 freaking percent possession. The easiest way, and I hate saying this, but the easiest way to beat this U.S. team is to let us have more of the ball, to pointlessly pass it around in wide spaces in the midfield, because without a target man, these crosses that we have going into the box, they're not going anywhere, and we aren't going to pass it through eight players in the opposition's box. You know, Van Hall let us have the ball, and he knew that 
we were expecting the Netherlands to come out and try, you know, some the opposite way around with them having some 70% possession, total football, you know, nonsense. And then the game could have gone like the England one, but that was not the case whatsoever. That one-on-one chance that Pulisic had, one-on-one to net that, this is what hurt the U.S. at the end of the day. Because for as much praise as I can give Van Hall, if we just convert a chance like that, it could have changed the match. It, we could have seen a shift in momentum. So Van Hall employed a very risky strategy, but it's one that was not made in, in, in recklessness. He had a good idea it was going to pay off. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. The U.S. is missing... One, this team is one Landon Donovan or one Clint Dempsey away from being a true menacing threat. A very, very decent second tier national side. And it just, it just simply comes down to just being outclassed with the, with the superior players that, that have, you know, been around the block as well as just the coach that, makes Greg Berhalter look like a PE teacher uh, at, at a local high school. Um, what I also want to say is I think Berhalter does get some blame as well for the substitutions he made. I think that Reyna, again, why didn't Reyna start any match in this tournament? And then when he came on the field, he was left out of position on the pitch. He Outside of his comfort zone in that natural role. And... This happened for about 75% of the time that he was on the pitch for the little time that he saw any game time. And the thing is, Haji Wright, okay, let's be honest. Yes, yes, that goal that we pulled back was a weird one. It took a weird deflection. Haji Wright may very well have not intended that to, to poke in the back of the net, but... We did put the Netherlands under substantial pressure, and it did give us an exciting last 10, 15 minutes of this match before, of course, Dumfries gave us the dagger to the stomach with being totally man un- unmanned at the, at, at the far post, left completely alone, the back line of the U.S. caught ball watching, and Matt Turner had no chance to save that. Even though Matt Turner himself, he put in a good performance, not just in this game, but in the World Cup as a whole, came up big with two saves. Um, the Netherlands were really feeling they were finding their rhythm, and it, it could have gotten ugly. It could have made like 3-0, 4-0, but Matt Turner prevented that from happening um, before Dumfries struck. But that was not Matt Turner's fault. That was the back line of the USA's fault. But anyway, going back to the Haji Wright goal. My concern is that Greg will view Haji Wright scoring as a vindication of having put him on the pitch and indeed called him up for a spot at the World Cup in general. Because let's be honest, other than that goal, and I feel happy for the kid, he, he scored a goal in a World Cup knockout stage match. Good for him. But as, as, as nice of a moment as that was for him, as nice of a moment as that was for him, he had a, an abysmal tournament he his one two touches were so slow all throughout this competition that chance at the end where he tries to skirt around the dutch goalkeeper to get a a, a shot to potentially tie the game at 2-2 and mount a, a huge possible comeback he, he he he's so slow and he's he doesn't respond quick enough and it shows that inexperience it, it just does. And it, it leaves me wondering why somebody like Jordan Pifak, who has had a great season in the Bundesliga currently with Union Berlin, why was he not called up for this World Cup? He could have been possibly that poacher in front of that. Maybe he's the guy who gets us that goal against England or that second goal against Wales or gets a goal here against the Netherlands and possibly brings us to extra time. So it's, I think it, a lot of the blame has to go to Greg here. All in all, was this a successful World Cup? I'm going to make a video when the World Cup is over about whether or not I think this was a successful World Cup for the U.S. because there's a lot of bittersweet elements to it. Um, But for now, I'll say 
it, I think it was a moderate success. A moderate success. We got out of the groups, made the knockout stage under a lot of pressure, possibly in spite of our manager, not because of him. Um, and it's all about just moving on from here and building towards 2026 when we when we take this home. <laughs>